please welcome to the stage Harrison Greenbaum, everybody. Thank you. Oh, it's good to be here. It's good to be uh, on a stage. I love being on stage. I did a lot of musical theater when I was in high school and college, so my nickname was Faggot. <laughs> it's good times. It's good times. You're still laughing. You're perpetuating a hate crime. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. People think I'm gay. All right, good reaction. Uh, <laughs> it's weird, right? Because once people think you're gay, there's no proving that you're straight, right? Like, you know what I'm talking about, Burberry scarf, right? Like, right? <laughs> right? Like, if you walk, in, you know what I mean? Like, if you walk in on me and I'm just making out with a dude, right? Don't get me excited. But if I was just <laughs> making out with a dude, you'd be like, he is definitely gay, and that's reasonable. <laughs> We all get on me, I'm making out with a woman, you'd be like, he's fooling himself. And that's... <laughs> Not that it doesn't have its advantages, though, you know what I mean? Like, nobody asked me to donate blood, so that's good. <laughs> HIV joke, high five, everybody. We did it. We did it. Actually, V is the Roman numeral four five, so HIV is a high five, if you pronounce it correctly. <laughs> it's an ancient language joke, everybody. This comedy train is going to crest. Let's all get on board. <laughs> I don't know, it's tough. I decided I was gonna be a comedian. It was senior year of college. Senior year of college. I had to tell my parents who were paying for college. <laughs> tough, you know. I had to sit them down. I was like, mom, dad, this is difficult. I have something very, very important to tell you. And they were like, you're gay. <laughs> and I, I was like, no, 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 no. I, wa I wanna be a comedian. And they were like, we'd rather you be gay. Like, is that, <laughs> is that the option on the table? <laughs> Why don't you just be like a gay lawyer or something? Like a big gay lawyer. We will go to the parade. <laughs> I'm a New Yorker, which is fun. I actually got into an argument on the subway. That was weird, an argument. And the guy quoted the Bible at me, which is not fair. You know what I mean? Like, if you get to quote from your favorite book, I'd be able to quote from my favorite book, right? He was like, men do not live on bread alone. Matthews, 4-4. Four, four. And I was like, everybody's a little bit magic. Harry Potter, chapter seven. <laughs> it's not a fair fight, right? Because one of those books is a classic about a man who has sacrificed himself for the good of the world. And the other is the Bible. Do you know what I'm saying, people? <laughs> I'm glad you guys are laughing. I had a joke the other night. This one was like, the Bible is true. I was like, really? It doesn't have a bibliography. <laughs> real books have references. So make some real books. Actually, the word Bible and bibliography have the same Latin root. Did you know that? Do you know what the word Bible means in English? Book. <laughs> That's some cocky shit. God was just writing stuff down. He was like, what are you going to call that? He's like, book. Jesus Christ. No, that's the sequel. <laughs> Takes a little bit of arrogance, right? Like, if you were making a movie, they're like, what are you going to call this movie? You're like, movie? What are you going to call the sequel? Movie 2? No, new movie. <laughs> Bible's a weird book. It's a weird book. My friend reads it religiously, which is really the only way to read it. <laughs> He's always quoting from it, you know? He's always like, God doesn't want you to play with yourself. I was like, really? Because last time I checked, he gave me two hands, a joystick, and a game I always win. <laughs> what kind of evil genius would install a Sega Genesis in your basement and then be like, only two player games? <laughs> what if you want to play Tetris one night? <laughs> I like that joke, because I actually did a joke in Georgia. I got, got very upset, came up to me after the show, said, I don't like that Bible joke. I said, sir, what problem do you have? And he said, you know you can't play Tetris on a Sega Genesis. <laughs> Truché. Truché. I don't know, it's amazing that we believe in God after all this stuff our parents put us through, right, when we're kids. You know, because like, you're five or six years old, you go up to dad, you're like, dad, are you Santa? And he's like, yeah, you got me. <laughs> me. Like, wait, you're not like also the Easter Bunny. And he's like, no, it's, it's also me. You got me again. <laughs> But you're not also the tooth fairy. And he's like, are you retarded? Like, <laughs> it's always me. I invent characters, wear costumes just to teach you lessons. Like, so you're God. 
No, no, that one's real. <laughs> that's the real one? Out of those four, that's the only one that doesn't leave direct evidence of his existence on an annual basis. Right? Santa's leaving you presents, the Easter Bunny's hiding eggs, the Tooth Fairy's putting money under your pillow. What does God do for you when you're five or six years old? He takes away grandpa, that's all he does. <laughs> A huge dick. It's crazy. Uh, I like being in New York, man. I like it. I live, I live in an apartment building, which is not that great, you know. It's just people stacked up on top of people like they're Legos or something. Like, I've never met my next-door neighbor, but I know she moans really loudly when she has sex. I finally met her in the elevator, like, two weeks ago. I was like, hey, how was your weekend? She's like, it was okay. I was like, it was more than okay. <laughs> you came seven times. You had an incredible weekend. I don't know, there are fun things to do. I went to the Guggenheim with Modern Art Museum. You know, I wish I understood modern art better, but I don't. It's very expensive, right? Confusing. I went to the Guggenheim. It was $22 admission. Got to the top of the museum, swear to God. It was just an empty white wall and two fluorescent lights. I went over to the security guard. I was like, I think somebody stole the painting. <laughs> Our kid came over and said, that is the art. I said, no, it's not. He said, yes, it is. Does it give you an emotion? I said, yeah, Jew rage. I'd like my money back. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I was angry. I took a shit on the floor. They put a velvet rope around it. That's another exhibit. <laughs> Shit's crazy. It's actually the name of the piece. Shit's crazy. <laughs> Whole country's crazy, you know. I mean, here's the thing. I travel the country doing comedy. It's great but I find it very difficult to explain New York to non-New Yorkers, right? Like the best I've come up with is being a New Yorker is kind of like being on a treadmill that is set faster than you're comfortable with, <laughs> right? Like you're sweaty, you're out of breath, you're in the exact same position you started out six years ago. <laughs> That's New York, right? California the treadmill's going a little bit slower. There's a view of the beach through the window, right? And, and the Midwest, it's like the treadmill's going really fast, but they're just standing on the bumpers. <laughs> right? Shit's just going by, right? They're just getting fatter and dumber, Big Bang Theory's on the television, they're eating deep fried Oreos. They're always suspicious of the treadmills because treadmills are usually black. <laughs> Have you ever seen a not black treadmill? No, do you know why? Racism, that's why. <laughs> It's a racist country, it's sad. I mean, even innocent things like board games, right? The board game Clue, I love Clue. You ever play Clue? Do you know all the suspects in Clue are white? Thank God. So otherwise that game would be so much more awkward to play with friends, <laughs> right? Like you'd be with all your buddies, but like it's the black guy, like we haven't even started playing yet. <laughs> Why do you always think it's Tyrone? I don't know. I'm trying to be healthy. I don't know. I was vegan for a while. Anybody else here sad and hungry all the time? <laughs> you know vegan, right? You give up meat and dairy and friendship. Those are the three things. <laughs> I try. I try. You know, I went to the vegan restaurants. They're great vegan restaurants in New York. They all closed, though, by like 10 or 11 because they know we don't have the energy to stay up past that time. <laughs> I don't know. I, was, I guess I'm worried about being fat. It's not, it's not a problem if you're fat. You know what I mean? It's gross, but like it's not... <laughs> No, it's cool. If you're fat, it's fine. But, like, you shouldn't be able to complain about problems that are clearly due to your fatness. Right? Like, I have a cousin. She's always complaining, you know? She's always like, oh, I have such bad knees. It's like, really? You're going to blame your knees? Your knees are doing an admirable job. Have you seen what your knees have to do? They're killing it. So like, you don't understand. I blew out my knee again. I was like, yeah, I'm sure whales used to have hundreds and hundreds of knees and they kept blowing them out. And God was like, go in the ocean. You're ruining all of it. Ever seen a fat person? Like, oh, it's so hot in this room. No, it's hot on your body. It's hot because you're made of blankets. It's hot because you're a Snuggie that you can't take off. Well, I gotta take off. You guys have been great. Thank you so much, everybody. You guys have been wonderful. Thank you so much. My name is Harrison Greenberg. Take care.